All commercial solar systems over 100 kilowatts require accurate metering from an LGC perspective. Everything has to be taken into account. But do people take into account the CT burden? Hi, I'm Veli from Greenwood Solutions. After watching this presentation, you'll understand what site loads need to be calculated when looking at systems over 100 kilowatt from an LGC perspective. And you'll also understand the concept of a CT burden. Now, if you like what you see, hit that subscription button. Let's get stuck into it. With LGC systems, there is a requirement for a certain accuracy of metering. And in this presentation, we'll be looking at a one megawatt or 1,000 kilowatt system installed in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. A system this size can potentially produce 1,314 gigawatt hours per year without taking panel degradation into consideration. This means that the metering required is a maximum allowable error of 1% and this means also that the system is eligible to claim 100% of the metered electricity generation DLEG for the LGCs. The general formula to calculate LGC is below. Now TLEG means total power generated by the power station. And when I say power station, I mean the commercial solar system. FSL is the fossil fuel component of the power generated by the power station. In this case, it is zero. AUX is the auxiliary power consumed during production or maintenance. MLF is a marginal loss factor. DLG equals the eligible generation, which equals TLEG minus the auxiliary, and you're assuming that the fossil fuel component is zero. Okay, maths. We love it. No, we don't. Now, to determine which CT is appropriate for a particular application, it's important to understand the following characteristics that are used to classify current transformers. We look at the ratio, the polarity and the accuracy classification. Now the CT ratio is the ratio of primary current input to secondary current output at full load. Let's say we have a CT with a ratio of 300 to 5. 300 primary amps at full load will produce 5 amps of secondary current when 300 amps flows through the primary. If the primary current changes, the secondary current output will change proportionately. In other words, in this case, 300 to 5. The polarity of a CT is determined by the directions the coils are wound around the core of the CT, clockwise or counterclockwise, and the way the leads, if any, are brought out of the transformer case. Now here's the interesting thing, the CT burden. The total resistance of the secondary circuit of a CT is known as a burden. And this is the sum of the resistance of the CT secondary winding, connecting wires, the lead resistance, and the resistance of the actual relay meter. Burden of the current transformer is expressed in volt amps. The total VA burden should be taken into account when a CT is used for measuring or protection purposes, especially on the large LGC systems. CT burns, not a term you'd hear very often, but incredibly important when it comes to the metering and calculation of energy produced from these LGC systems. While designing the protection system or measurement system, the VA burden of all the measuring instruments and protection relay must be taken into account for building a reliable measurement and protective system. Calculating the CT burden involves a few steps and it's effectively looking at what components are involved in the process, what the CT is connected to, what its resistance is, what is the lead resistance, what about the Rogalski coil, what about the, the relay itself, and adding all these burdens together to come up with an acceptable figure that goes towards the calculation in how much energy can actually go out and service those site loads. This is a one megawatt commercial solar system using the following equipment. One by IntelliPro Relay, 3,000 amps, five amps, primary, secondary. 
One by five amp output three phase rope CT, a Rogalski coil. One by Fronius smart meter, 480 volts UL. So we have to look at the resistance of copper at 20 degrees C, the temperature coefficient of copper as well, the five amp current output integrator, we assume a maximum of 50 milliohms, the CT cable cross-sectional area, which in this case happens to be 16 mil squared, and the CT cable length, uh, the IntelliPro to the COI, and we're looking at a 15 metre max in this situation for the calculation. Also the CT input burden of the COM app IntelliPro, and this is 0.5 VA from the data sheet. So we have to determine the cable's resistance at 75 degrees centigrade. So the calculation is 1.68 times 10 to the power negative 8, uh, brackets 1 plus 0 0.0039, brackets 75 minus 20, and the 75 minus 20 are the degrees. That equals 1.68 by 10 to the power negative 8, brackets 1.2145. Yep, maths, lots of figures. You just have to do the calculations yourself when you've got time, or the inclination. And 2.04 times 10 to the power negative 8 ohms per metre. Now we have to calculate the wire burden in VA, which basically equals current times resistance. So I squared times 2.04 times 10 to the power negative 8 ohms per metre times 50 metre length, remember, and dividing this by 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 5 per metre squared. And the calculation goes on and on. Now we have to add them together. So we have 0.478 VA plus 0.5 VA equals 0.98 VA, which is less than the 1.8 VA allowable from CT clamp data sheet. Conclusion. Calculating the CT burden is important for accurate LGC calculations. The total resistance of the secondary circuit of a CT is known as a burden. You have to look at the temperature coefficient and resistance of copper amongst other things. Thanks so much for watching our presentation on CT burdens. A really interesting concept. I'm Veli from Greenwood Solutions. If you have any questions, any inquiries, any answers, feel free to drop us a line and check out our website and see what we actually do in the real world.